Yes, success! I wanted to see a big improvement there because it was really frustrating if the i5-6500 was not strong enough to skip through all these frames without lagging. So that was really annoying. That's why we upgraded for this CPU. And there was a trend which I could see. The longer the video or the more FPS the video had, I had one video with 50 FPS and two with 60 FPS, the higher the frame count, the faster the i7-6700 was in terms of editing the video. And I think we scored over, what was it, I think 60, 70 FPS. What's up guys, welcome to a brand new video. Today it's finally upgrade time for my gaming PC right here. We got a new processor on our hands, this is an i7 6th gen, i7-6700K to be exact. We're gonna chuck that in and change it for the i5-6500 that is still in this gaming PC. So I thought today would be a good idea to show you my gaming PC. It's been a year since I've last shown it on the channel and we only made a couple upgrades to the PC. First of all, we changed from the CPU cooler, we just had this cute little cooler here and we changed it out to a water cooler. This is the NZXT Kraken. At the time when I got this, I was thinking about making a video, but then I only made a video for Instagram. Maybe I'm gonna blend this in here somewhere. So, so far we only made an upgrade from the air cooler to a water cooler, the NZXT Kraken, which is keeping the i5-6500 very cool. I think around the 50 degrees or something, even when I'm gaming or editing videos. But now we have it all to do again. It was very fiddly to get this water cooler in. And now we have to get it all out and then change it for the i7-6700K. So let's compare the specs side by side. So the i5-6500 goes up to 3.4 GHz boost clock, 3.2 GHz on all four cores though, if you're really editing videos, it doesn't really quite get to the 3.4 GHz. So base clock 3.2 GHz for the i5-6500, 3.4 GHz boost clock. Both CPUs are from the Skylake 6th gen technology, 14 nanometers. And they came out back in 2015. And the i7-6700K, to be more exact, cost around 330 euros. And so quite a little bit more compared to the i5-6500, which I think was close to the 200 euro range. And yeah, I'm hoping that even though it doesn't have more cores, so both have four cores, but the i5-6500 only has four threads. And like I said, it goes only up to 3.2, 3.3 gigahertz on all four cores. And the i7-6700K, on the other hand, of course, you can overclock that. Unfortunately, my motherboard doesn't support that, but it will be fine. The i7-6700K goes up to four gigahertz on all cores when editing or gaming. So uh, there's quite a big boost in terms of clock speed. And also it has eight threads, more, most importantly. So I'm really hoping that clock speed and more threads, the double thread count, will really give me a boost when editing and rendering videos. So that's what we're gonna focus in this video. I hope you enjoy it. And hopefully this make your decision easier if you want to do the same upgrading from an i5-6500 or even upgrading from an older CPU to an i7-6700K for video editing. So yeah, what are we waiting for? Let's get that CPU out, get the i7 in, and yeah, then we're gonna make some tests on HitFilm Express, just rendering a couple of videos which I did, which are already on the channel. I think we're gonna just render uh, the last couple of videos, one uh, gaming footage video and one riding footage video, and see how it does. Hopefully it's gonna be a lot faster. I will catch you with the results. Success. There it says now processor i7 6700K 4 gigahertz. Nice. Looking good, guys. Looking good. 
All right, guys, so here we are for the conclusion of this video. Now, let's talk about, uh, did we get any improvements? Uh, was it worth to invest 70 euros to get the i7-6700K? And um, you might be asking, 70 euros, that's quite cheap. Yes, well, I already calculated that I sold the i5-6500, which I did, so I sold the old CPU for 50 euros. And then I bought uh, the i7-6700K for 120 euros. So uh, you could say we upgraded for 70 euros. Now, does it make any difference in terms of gaming? Well, gaming, I didn't really cover this because I think it doesn't make too much of a difference. But in terms of editing and video rendering, it made quite a big difference just for the 70 euros more that we paid. All right, so we quickly jumped into the game. You saw that Cyberpunk 207070 and a really cool game and I think we scored over, what was it, I think 60, 70 FPS, so uh, in 1080p on high settings, so not too bad, all things considered. But in terms of video rendering, there were two main points that I wanted to see an improvement. First of all, of course, the time that it takes to render a video, so I wanted to see an improvement there. I was hoping for 20% and uh, then in terms of actually working on the video itself in the timeline, the scrubbing speed when you switch between frames. I wanted to see a big improvement there because it was really frustrating. The i5-6500 was not strong enough to skip through all these frames without lagging. So that was really annoying. That's why we upgraded for this CPU. And as you know me, I just love improving stuff and especially when we can get it on the cheap as well. So okay, let's finally talk about the results. So the deal maker for me is not only the time that we save while the video is rendering. That's fine, I take that on top, but what is actually what will lower my frustration levels when actually working on the video in the timeline, when scrubbing through all the frames, there was a big improvement there. So I wouldn't say it's 100%, but uh, when I go through the frames now, um, there's almost no lagging anymore. And I can immediately press on the space bar to start the video, to start the video playback. So big improvements, there are almost no lagging anymore. So you can see the higher clock speed and the fret count actually um, improved my system a lot in terms of video editing. So I'm really happy. So I had three videos that I edited in the last weeks and I just rendered it again with the i7-6700K. And there was a trend which I could see. The longer the video or the more FPS the video had, I had one video with 50 FPS and two with 60 FPS, the higher the frame count, the faster the i7-6700 was in terms of editing the video. So let's see the first video. This was the riding footage, 50 FPS. Saw an improvement of 28% in terms of rendering the video, so not bad. Then we had the iRacing video, 60 FPS. With the i5-6500, it did like 39 minutes of rendering and with the i7-6700K, it only took like 26 minutes. So improvement of 13 minutes and uh, almost 33 percent so uh, almost one third quicker than the i5-6500 and if you think about it they are both actually four cores yeah but uh, the difference is it has a double thread count so it has eight threads the 6700k and it also has a higher clock speed of four gigahertz so but yeah even with the 800 megahertz more in terms of clock speed, the i7-6700K was 33% faster than the i5-6500 in uh, terms of video rendering. So that is definitely success and I'm looking forward to rendering many more videos for you guys and being much quicker as well. So definitely consider when you're upgrading your CPU, of course price performance, of course, but um, yeah, for 70 euros we got an improvement of 33%, which is really good, I would say, in terms of price performance. You see there, clock speed matters and also thread count matters. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the upgrade and I was also happy to show you again the few little upgrades that we made to my little beast here. All right, that's it for now. If you want to see more content like this, uh, more reviews about tech products, about racing gear, also some bike nerd out, then yeah, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell and you won't miss any new videos coming out. All right, that's it for now and I wish you a nice day. As as always, I will catch you in the next video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Yes, success.